Dotty inventions and some real ones too. We've got letters, Digby, rolled around with some wires, Professor Dotty Dabble shouted. Digby climbed the wall, crossed the ceiling, and took the letters. Digby could see through what was inside the letters without opening them using x-ray. A telephone bill, gas rates, water rates, monthly invention maniac, and an invitation to the invention contest. Wow! A lifetime vacation will be given to the best inventor. Where? asked Professor Dabble. At the National Science Museum. What? You mean I should enjoy my lifetime vacation there? No, I mean the contest takes place there, said Digby. Hmm, then we should give it a try. But what invention should I hand into the competition? Digby wrote down Professor Dabble's famous inventions. A chocolate cup, pour hot water and drink it quickly before the chocolate melts. A moving telephone booth. It's for those who are very shy. A mowing plane. You can mow the lawn while flying. Talking socks. A cage with a heater. It's for a parakeet that wants to go out in the winter. A nose picking thread. It cleans up your nostrils. Warm false teeth. It keeps the inside of your mouth warm. After writing them down, Digby suddenly saw the ballpoint pen in his hand and asked, Is this your invention too? Well, maybe, Professor Dabble mumbled. Is that true? Digby turned on the computer to see if she was right. The ballpoint pen was invented by Ladislaw Biro in 1938. Hungarian Biro was a news writer, and every time he wrote an article, it was messed up because the ink from the nib blotted. The ink the news writers were using was too thick to be used with a nib. So, Biro made the ballpoint pen that had a tiny little ball at the end. When the ballpoint pen moves, the ball spins and sucks in the ink inside. And it writes with the ink stuck on the ball. Unlike when we use a nib, it doesn't blot. The ballpoint pen is still called Biro in England. If his name was Flopoff, it would be called so too. Digby and Professor Dabble loaded the inventions in the car and left for the National Science Museum. I wish it would stop raining. I can't see anything at all. Professor Dabble shouted as if she was competing with the roaring engine of her car. Why don't you turn on the wipers? That's a great idea. But the wipers inside the windshield were useless. It would have been better if they had been placed outside the windshield, Digby complained. Professor Dabble thought for a while and said, Hmm, is that why the windshield wipers I invented are useless? Digby used his computer to see who really invented the windshield wipers. The windshield wipers were invented by American Mary Anderson in 1903. Every time it rained, she could see the drivers open the window and look outside. It was very dangerous as well as inconvenient. So, she made the wipers to wipe rain, sleet or snow away from the windshield. Around 1916, all the new cars in America had the windshield wipers. We should fly above the rain clouds. Hold on hard, Digby. Here we go, shouted Professor Dabble. Then a set of wings spread at the sides of the car, and the car flew up in the air. Soon the two were flying in the clear blue sky above the clouds. Put this on just in case, Professor Dabble handed Digby a parachute. Is this your invention too? asked Digby. 
Well, maybe, Professor Dabble mumbled. Digby searched for the parachute. The parachute was first tried out by French Louis Sebastian Lenormand. In 1783, he held an umbrella in each hand and bravely jumped off a tall tree. Encouraged, he got on a hot air balloon and flew to the sky to try his homemade parachute after two years. But he didn't jump himself. He tied a little basket to the parachute, put his puppy in it, and dropped it. Everyone cheered as the parachute landed safely. Of course, his puppy was more excited than anyone. The first person who had survived after jumping off a plane was Harold Harris, who was a soldier. In 1922, during the training, he jumped off the plane with the parachute and landed on a vineyard. getting hungry. Let's go around to see if there's a restaurant nearby, said Professor Dabble. When they were flying low looking for a restaurant, Digby saw a flying saucer passing by the car. Professor Dabble, it's a flying saucer. Professor Dabble burst into laughter. <laughs> it's not a flying saucer. It's what we use when playing frisbee. Oh, really? Is that your invention, too? asked Digby, feeling a bit embarrassed. But Professor Dabble was pouring all her energies into landing. So Digby decided to search for Frisbee. The Frisbee Baking Company of Bridgeport, Connecticut made pies and sold them to college students. After eating the pies, students played throwing the empty pie tins. And so the new game started. In 1948, Walter Frederick Morrison made a plastic disc. It could fly further and with better accuracy than a tin pie plate. In 1955, when he made the Pluto Platter, a Pluto-shaped disc, the popularity of UFOs and flying saucers with the public was growing. He became incredibly rich. Starving. I could even eat a stone. Professor Dabble filled her plate with food. Then she stepped on her shoestrings and fell as she was hurrying to pay. Cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, carrots, apple pies, and custard flew through the air like a colorful rainbow. Digby asked why she hadn't worn the ones with Velcro. Right. Velcro is the most wonderful one among my inventions. Professor Dabble replied excitedly. However, is that true? Digby searched for Velcro with his computer while Professor Dabble tied her shoestrings. Georges de Mestral was an inventor and mountaineer in Switzerland. He invented Velcro after he went for a walk in the country road with his dog. When they returned home, the dog's fur was all messy. Burrs, the little plant seed sacks, were clinging all over its shaggy fur. George looked at them carefully with a microscope. There were little hooks that would stick to soft cloth or fur on the burrs. Putting this to use, he made a hook and loop fastener and named it Velcro, a combination of the word velour and crochet. Nobody seemed interested in this invention at first. These days, however, a great deal of Velcro is being sold worldwide every year. The National Science Museum was jam-packed with people. People from all over the world were amazed and impressed to see the odd yet marvelous inventions on display. The following are some of them. A pencil that corrects misspelled words. A table that serves meals by itself. An umbrella that plays music. A walking stick that finds the way home by itself. A yo-yo that moves without a string. 
an automatic portable chair that folds and unfolds at one click of a button, a snack scarf you can eat during the boring time when waiting for a bus. Oh no! How am I supposed to win a prize with these stupid soaking wet inventions? Digby encouraged Professor Dabble as she said this. That's okay. What is important is not winning a prize, but participation itself. Do you really think so? The judges shouted at that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the best invention of this contest is... Who knew that I would win the best invention award for making you? On vacation, Professor Dabble was amazed as she put a spoonful of ice cream into her mouth. Congratulations, Professor Dabble, said Digby. I mean, you are always with me, so I totally forgot that you were also my invention. Looking back on those times now, it was a piece of cake to invent you. I just taped a few old cans and computer gadgets together, and ta-da, I made you. Digby didn't say anything. He was just smiling and looking for something with his computer.